What's up everybody? This is James with Sailing Zingaro and today we are going to find out why my boat ripped in half. We're going to prod, poke, and rip off some wood and some fiberglass to try to see exactly what failed and why. Stay tuned to the end of the video because we are going to be giving away my favorite coconut bowl from the boat, a soft shackle or two, and even a free week to one of our patrons. So let's go see what the damage is. Okay, first of all, a little disclaimer, I am not a naval architect, I am not a boat expert. I'm just trying to show you guys what happened and what I think the causes are with this boat. That said, I've got 25,000 miles on this boat and I know it really well, so I'm pretty sure, uh, judging by uh, the links that people have sent me, talking with boat designers and boat builders, I have a pretty good idea what happened, uh, what the structural problems were, and what the, even the design flaws were. So we're gonna talk about all that. First, I wanna show you the underside. Now this is actually a point of failure that happened after everything else failed. All the bulkheads and stringers and main beams failed inside the hull, and that caused this joint to fail and the hull to uh, cant out and almost rip off. Um, so what you're, what you're looking at here is, this is 5 eighths plywood uh, sitting on a very strong wood beam. The wood is fiberglassed onto the Arix foam hull. So from here down, it's all Arix foam. And I peeled off this piece. Uh, this is what's holding it together. It's, a, it's just a piece of fiberglass tape. It's about four inches. And it looks like it's been filled with um, uh, like the spray foam stuff. Like this is not Arix foam, this is just spray foam. What we're gonna do down here is we're gonna make sure that this beam doesn't have any rot because if that has any rot, it definitely could have added to the stress. So. We're gonna rip off this little layer of fiberglass right here and we're gonna uh, poke this beam and just see if the wood is hard or if it's rotten. Yeah, so that's really hard wood. There is nothing rotten in there. So that's not the problem. All right, let's go on the top of the deck and I'll show you exactly what happened and where it ripped on top. Okay, now we're up on top of the boat and this is really where the unseen damage is because the entire deck took a lot of the force and you can see some cracking on top, but I think there's a lot more damage than you see. So uh, let's just follow the damage trail and try to figure out exactly where and what's going on there. So here's the, here's the crack. This is all broken. This crack goes all the way up here and it goes in this locker. There's more cracking here. This is definitely broken. This stringer's broken. Why you would have a hole there, I don't know, but it definitely broke on that hole. Um, let's look in this locker now. Okay, so, so now you can really see some damage here. This is all delaminated and cracked and broken all the way down to here. So all the way down to here, up here, that's all broken. That crack goes back. That stringer's busted right there. This is the one that I replaced on the other side. And then this is also all delaminated here. See, and then cracked all the way down to here. That's a real bad one. That's broken, the whole thing is broken. Uh, this stringer is also broken, and the deck is separating right here. So that needs to be fixed. If you can see, the deck is very, very separated here. This is um, delaminated fiberglass and broken. It's broken here. This whole thing is all busted. This thing is completely done. All delaminated. Big crack in the fiberglass here. And then this is where you can really tell what's going on. This is very delaminated. This is gone. Took a layer of plywood with it. And then this crack extends all the way down here. All the way to the end. So, that doesn't look horrible but once we get inside, you'll see the real damage. So let's go in there. Let's 
Okay, now that we made it inside, um, I'm just gonna start from the back and work my way forward and show you guys what happened. So this is what I think the design error is. There's nothing connecting this main beam with this beam. There needs to be more support here. So what they did was they cut this beam at the door, they added this beam, and they went around this way and added the beam there on the top. So the only structural support is right here, and that's where it failed. So this is something that has been uh, brought up in multiple forums and actually emailed to me personally, that this part may have been a design flaw. This little crutch here, uh, it takes a lot of force, that area, and uh, yeah, it might, might have been a problem. Okay, going through the engine room, this is the next beam that failed here. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but what this is is one piece of wood with a piece of plywood glued to either side. You know what, I'm just gonna rip this out so you guys can see it. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a piece of plywood, another piece of plywood, and an actual piece of real wood. Now the wood looks strong, it doesn't look wet at all. It's not garbage, there's no moisture, but the plywood looks very wet. And I'm gonna set this down for a second while I pry on this thing, but... Oh yeah, that's all wet. Um, it looks like some of the glue has failed inside. So, it looks like the ply, the wood part is actually okay, but the glue in between has been soaking up water and moisture over 40 years. And that's apparent because it's all black and it's splitting down the middle. Okay, so that's the one we just ripped out. We can see here that the layers of plywood are a little soft. Next back is this one. This is 100% ply. And it doesn't look like this is um, wet at all. Looks pretty good in there. Looks pretty good in there. So I don't think there's any issues there. Looks like this one may have gotten a little wet inside. But I don't think so. I think that's just a stress fracture. So here's that same deck, from, but this time from inside. So that's all broken and delaminated. This stringer, surprisingly, is not broken, but I guess it doesn't really hold a load. But this decking is all separated all the way back here. This is broken. That stringer's gone. Okay, coming out of the engine room now, I'm gonna show you guys one more place that it's broken. It's here, and all the fiberglass on the inside is delaminated off of it. And it really looks like it had gotten a little bit of moisture inside the laminate, inside the plywood layers. It looks just a little black, it looks a little dark to me. And that cracked here and went all the way, just delaminated the fiberglass on the hole there. It's also broken here. You can see that some of this is looking a little wet. Uh, also just moisture getting in there. This beam is all broken and this is delaminated from the deck all the way back to just behind that red tub. And pretty much the same place on the other side. Here, uh, took out this, broke this one, separated the deck up here, all the way up to there, and broke this beam too. All right, moving on. This is all separated, obviously, you saw from the other side. This piece of teak is broken, that's too bad, that's a nice piece of teak. All the way down, that's where the um, hold the deck joint is, so that's natural. And now here we come to the coup de gras, the main beam. Okay, so this main beam looks like it hasn't been maintained properly because it's all black. It looks like moisture got in there and it was probably, it looks to me like maybe it was a leak, but judging by all the rest of the plywood in the whole boat, 
I would say that this is 40 years of moisture being in the boat and it's seeping into the plywood. It looks like it's through the, everywhere. It's just part of the ply now. Let's, let's see. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It looks like it's pretty good here. Yeah, it looks okay. I'm trying to get a bigger piece off. So I'm not really sure, to tell you the truth. The plywood looks like it's fine, but it, it looks like it might be in the glue in between the plywood. And then this is this would be in between the main beam, but the main beam, as you can see, is fine. It looks good. It looks like it's all good wood there. When you get up to here, this is all good wood too. This is this is not rotten. And then here, it's not rotten either. So it looks like these bolts had something to do with it. Uh, these two bolts could have weakened that structure because that's where it failed. Boom, boom, right at those two bolts. To tell you uncandid, this is bullshit. Uh, I'm actually very upset about this. Somebody put two bolts into the main beam right where they were needed most. So that was a stupid move. I would say that probably this beam failed first or that aft beam failed first, but they both failed just about the same time because I didn't hear any boom, 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 or crack, crack, crack. All I heard was one big crack. So it was probably everything put together. The uh, moisture that got in the plywood, these two bolts, the, um, the main stringers, the improper fairing for, for the bridge deck connection underneath the boat, uh, all those things in combination with the waves made this boat fail. So here's the inside from the engine room, the, the next bulkhead up. It's pretty much delaminated from here all the way back, all the way back, all the way, broke this stringer, and then all the way back here, and then this is also broken. And strangely enough, this side looks like it's pretty good. It's pretty good wood. It's not bad. But, uh, Consequently, if you're a boater, these Kaframo fans are the best fans in the world. Awesome fans. I think I'm gonna steal those fans. We're moving on to the head. So this is the delamination in the head. It starts from here. It starts down there. That's just uh, the deck separating from the, uh, the hull here. And then it has separated the hull all the way down with the fiberglass and this is just delaminated fiberglass there's the beam i'm talking about it looks good it doesn't look too bad and then there's where the foam starts and uh this is erex this is all erex that stuff's really hard okay so that's how that's put together and then that's also cracked up here and cracked along the top and is separating here then you got the locker. Okay, the last thing that I wanna show you is something that wasn't a cause of the event, but a repercussion of us trying to save the boat. When we put the Dyneema around the boat, it actually started eating into the foam extension here. Uh, originally, this was the end of the boat and the last owner put these extensions on so we could put, put kick-up rudders on it, give it a place for the rudder to hook into. Um, so this is all just a Vinicel foam and this is plywood about to here. We wrapped the Dyneema around this extension and thank God it was here, that saved us, but it ate into this extension bad. Uh, it chewed like halfway through, it's pretty, pretty insane. So that's it for the video. I uh, hope you got a good idea of how the damage that was sustained to this boat and maybe why it happened, uh, at least my theory on it. I'd love to hear your theory. So put a comment in the, in the comments below and let me know uh, what you think. So before we go, we've got the giveaway. But before we get to that, I'd like to thank all 664 people as of today that have pledged your love on our Kickstarter campaign. Thank you guys very, very much. Thank you to the patrons uh, and now, the giveaway. All right, let's jump right into it. So, first thing I have to give away is this coconut bowl. This is our favorite coconut bowl from the boat. We ate lots of soups and cereals out of this. 
Uh, it is a huge coconut. I mean, this I can't even put my hands around this thing. A lot of you have been asking me if I'm going to sell these. No. Uh, they take too long to make, and it's too hard to find big coconuts. I can't sell them in bulk, but uh, one lucky patron will get it. So I've set up a random number generator on my phone. That's this. And I've got a Google spreadsheet. Let's see if we can get someone this bowl. Okay, number 57. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? 57. David Beaumont in Perth, Washington. You are now the proud new owner of this coconut bowl. Thank you so much for your support of us and uh, enjoy This is a really cool bowl. Next up, I've got five soft shackles. These are from the boat. They were used on the boat. They are in varying uh, states of use and I think they'd be kind of a cool gift for you guys. So we're gonna auction them off one at a time. Numero uno. Number 75, 75, 75. Eric Pearson. Eric Pearson of Brookfield, Illinois. You are the proud new owner of one of my patented shop shackles. Not patented yet, but maybe I can patent. I don't think I can patent. All right, who's next? Okay, 13 is Andrea. Andrea from Sao Paulo. But this is now yours. Thank you very much for your support. Very cool of you. All right, 147, 147. 147 is Ken Wood. You are now the proud owner of a soft shackle. All right, I got one more of these to give away. Let's do it one more time. Number 48, 48. 48 is Counting Stars, Redmond, Washington. Counting Stars, you're gonna get the last soft shackle. Okay, next thing we're giving away is this canvas print. This is a picture of Kimmy in front of Tongariki, which is the very magical spot with the most Moais on Easter Island. We will sign this and address it to you. Let's figure out who it's going to. All right, 15, number, lucky number 15. All right, number 15, Andy Simmons. Andy Simmons, you are now the proud owner of this. <laughs> so I hope you like it. I hope you dig it. Hang it on your wall. Be proud. So if you guys want to get your hands on one of these or some limited edition signed art, they are available through our Kickstarter campaign. You can just Google Kickstarter Zingaro or go to the link at the top of the description. Okay, last thing is a week on the boat. Now this is a, a benefit to all of our plank owner patrons. If you'd like to see or you'd like to enter into that, please go to patreon.com slash svzingaro here and uh, you can enter in to win a week on the boat. So here we go. These are the four people that are entered into this drawing right now. Our four plank owner patrons. I'm gonna put them in this hat and give them a little shake and we will draw one name out. And the winner is Rich Ludke. Rich, congratulations, you're gonna be the first patron to visit us on Zingaro 2. All right, that's it from us. Mash that like button and subscribe if you're not. We'll see you next time.